Welcome to New Connection, where you can tune in and grow. I'm your host, Vicki Thompson. You may be familiar with New Connection Magazine for Conscious Living, which has been enjoyed by readers in the Pacific Northwest for more than 20 years. Now we're excited to bring New Connection to life in your home. On New Connection, we welcome authors, practitioners, and visionaries to share new ideas for alternative health, spirituality, and personal growth. Today, I'd like to welcome to New Connection, Tammy Lynn Kent, who's the author of Wild Feminine, Finding Power, Spirit, and Joy in the Female Body. Tammy also is a women's health physical therapist and founder of Holistic Pelvic Care for Women. Tammy, welcome to New Connection. Thank you, Vicki. I'm so excited to be here. I like the title of your book, which is Wild Feminine. Yes. And I think as a woman, there's something very attractive in that, to be a wild feminine woman. So what is this wild feminine energy that we all hold in our bodies? Yeah, well, I first, I first discovered it by accident because I was a women's health physical therapist and I was working with the body. And primarily as a women's health physical therapist, you're working in the pelvic bowl. So it's this inherently deeply creative center. But I initially approached it more as a physical therapist, thinking that I might fix symptoms or help people with pelvic imbalances, which the work does do beautifully. But what happened was I started tuning in to the energy, because I'm also an energy reader, and began to listen to this creative energy in the center and was so amazed by the beauty that I would find in every woman, no matter where she'd been, no matter her relationship with her body, no matter if she had um, experienced difficulties or trauma, there was this beauty that was intact. And it's our creative center and it's the creative energy that runs through us as women. And so I began at first just trying to understand what I was seeing because I hadn't really seen the true feminine, I would say. You know, there's lots of stereotypes in our culture about what is feminine and what that means. But what I was seeing was more of a deep essence, a presence that was beautiful and whole, kind of like in nature that you might see in an undisturbed area where you go and you witness the beauty. And so as I came and began to learn more about this essence in the body and studied it and wrote about it, which was kind of a long-term process because I wrote for several years before I actually had a book, I wanted to use more language that could describe it. So I find that in the, in the female pelvis, we even sometimes the, the words, um, the organs themselves, when we talk about them in a clinical way, it doesn't really capture the poetry, the beauty, the mystery that's there. And so I started using, being a writer, I started using language, poetry, words that might express this more adequately. And wild kept coming back to me, wild feminine. And for me, that's really um, thinking more of the Earth's energy and the wild, intact places, how radiant and beautiful they are, and that we also have this essence in our bodies as women. We even carry the Earth cycle in us with our menstrual cycle that's tied to the womb, I mean, tied to the moon, you know, mm -hmm. our womb bleeding times, but also just the creative seasons, you know, the spring and summer and fall and winter, a woman's energy will be different and reflect that. So wild for me was really a word that could more deeply describe when we tapped into this wholeness and this fullness that we would that we would um, embody and so I wanted language that women could start to relate to to help them remember and for me words became a way to kind of tune in and tap into this deeper essence and find our way there and it also became a way for me to explain how to get there through meditation and visualization and over time with, with spending time working with women one-on-one -on -one and with working with this deep essence in my own life I ended up uh, writing a diagram that's in the Wild Feminine book and, it, and I call it the Wild Feminine Landscape. Mm. So that is, I think we were going to show a picture of that, mm -hmm. but that um, drawing is very simple yet it, there's quite a deep understanding present in that and it's um, three concentric circles approximately and the center being the physical, the pelvic bowl and of course I'm thinking physically with the fascia and the muscles where I'm working. But that can also be this, the way that we embody our lives, the, the habits, the patterns that we do on a daily basis, the, the ways that we live, the things that we're creating, the more physical forms that, that take, give shape to our lives. And then around that, we have more of the energy, and that's where things are a little bit more fluid. And you can have the energy of emotions, of mental patterns um, around, and you can have the energy of the, the ovaries or the womb or the actual body itself. And so for me, when I'm talking about the feminine, I'm inviting women to come down and explore this physical realm and where it meets the energy. And then around that, we have the spirit and ancestor energy. So those are the even 
more profound energies that we can begin to tap into to access more fully this current that runs through us. So it's a very uh, detailed system of celebrating the woman, it yes. sounds like. And I like that it's a very natural way, an earthy way of looking um, at your creativity as a woman. Absolutely. I think so often images in society can right. be uh, demeaning or over sexualized yes. for women yes. um, and overcharged That's but right. it seems like with calling it a wild feminine it's just um, being a human and it's almost being a, a human animal like we are. Yes, it's more that. expansive. That's exactly what you're saying and that's what I was finding when I first was tapping into this energy and then I was looking at the way I understood feminine as more of a gender stereotype and that's so narrow and a lot of the images we see are very narrow and they take the femininity and put it into this narrow box and yet I would tap into this place that was expansive and, and very unique and individual. It was like a radiant star in each woman that the more she could tap into this place in herself and begin to bring expression to it, the more full and robust and radiant she became. And so it's this fullness and it's this landscape that we can create with as women. And so for me, it was really a roadmap, you know, because I had the opportunity over time of sitting with over a thousand women, wow. which is a lot of women. And most people won't have that experience. So I also felt a duty to put it down on paper to say, this is how you find your way there. This mm -hmm. is where you may get blocked. And this is how to work with those blocks on a physical and an energetic, and then an even deeper calling in spirit and blessing energy to help you. It's really a beautiful beautiful pathway and I think of it like an energetic map that women can go to and then begin the work mm -hmm. of finding their way into this space. That's beautiful. Well, part of your journey in helping women to celebrate their femininity, um, you experienced a miscarriage, right. which it sounds like really helped you develop this more and to yes. tap more into celebration of the woman. Absolutely. Can you share uh, what, what your experience was? I will. So my miscarriage, so I had a first gave birth to my first son who's now 11 and so he was born and, and that opened me into a deeper relationship with my body, um, particularly on a physical level, just really getting in touch with that place and then also in mothering and really wanting to be a creative dynamic woman and mother and kind of integrate my life. So I kind of began there and then the next being that came to to my body was what I call my spirit daughter. I had a very mystical experience of miscarriage and it was uh, very spiritual. I had a vision, several of them actually, um, that kind of told me what was happening and, and that it would be a loss but that her spirit would be with me and there would be an energy that would be with me and it was the first time I really understood that this is a doorway, a sacred doorway in women. And it, it, you can tap into it even if you haven't had children. It's just we aren't talking about it like that, so we aren't even thinking about it like that. It is this place where we connect through our bodies to the spirit realm because every person enters in this place. It's a powerful doorway. And because in miscarriage you have an entry and then you also have an exit, so you have a, a, a coming in of spirit and then you have an exit, a dying, in your own body, it's a profound experience. And for me, it was like a direct link to the spirit realm, again, through my womb. I really understood the process of life, that we come into a body and then we leave. But because it happened in my womb, it was so powerful. And I felt like when, when I, I say she, because I actually did have a vision of sort of a female deity rising up out of my body. and. I share some of the story in Wild Feminine, but I haven't even told the full story yet. So in this part of the vision, I saw this beautiful, radiant goddess riding, rising up. And mm -hmm. really, when she left, she took a, a real burden of pain that I had been mm -hmm. carrying, of grief, of um, probably losses that had been in my family for generations that were blocking my joy, blocking my connection to the spirit realm. And it felt like she took that from me. So I was so grateful. I felt this lifting, this huge lifting of grief. And so I began to explore explore the whole process of grief and, and what it looks like when we grieve. And the other thing I was noticing is women were often carrying grief. Mm -hmm. In this culture in general, we don't have rituals to clear grief on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. um, some cultures understand that women hold the grief and carry the grief, so they do ritual to release it. And a lot of women in this time that I see as clients in, in kind of more Western society have learned to hold it and not even really knowing they're holding it. It seems normal. They they walk around feeling kind of a heaviness and they think mm -hmm. that's normal. So for me, it was like the first time this huge weight had been lifted from me and death is a doorway time. So you really get to open and expand and it's a time
time when you can clear things. Uh, birth is like that too. These doorway times we have opportunities to clear. So this huge um, shift happened for me and it became such a blessing because all this energy came in and part of the reason it became a blessing is because I could really tune into that part of my body. Sometimes it doesn't feel that way for a woman. Mm -hmm. She feels very uh, lost in the grief or if she has a miscarriage, there, because it is a doorway, a woman can actually get a little bit hung up energetically. So one of the things I now know to do with women is I say, come to me after you have a miscarriage. Because in, in, the, in, in our society, usually a woman will just hear, come back when you're pregnant again. Mm -hmm. So there isn't really a holding that happens. Mm -hmm. And then there's energetic uh, difficulty that can happen because it's such a doorway. And I think women actually get hung up a little bit, still kind of holding on to that, that life. And they don't, can't really move forward. And they don't feel quite right. And they don't know why. So I've sat with many women since um, who I've helped with this process of coming back into to their present time. So, um, so when I allowed that to lift, then I could really bring in that blessing energy. And then it does become a blessing. And the other thing I had that was really profound was an image of all these spirits waiting to come in and I asked this spirit who I miscarried how can I honor you how can I remember you and the words I heard were teach women to to know and love their beauty so that you can restore this sacred place within mm -hmm. because I think all souls really desire to come into a place where women are more tapped in to the awareness of the potential mm -hmm. instead of a place that might hold shame you know we've done a lot of shame around the pelvic bowl and so that limits the ability of a spirit to bring their full radiance in so the more we honor this as a sacred space, the more the souls can come in with more of their radiance fully activated. So that was a really profound experience to see that. And I just saw the souls stretched out as far as I could see. And they were sitting with her just saying, please help the women. Oh, that's beautiful. Yes. I think that's such a beautiful way of looking at the experience of miscarriage because it's, it's so traumatic and painful for a woman. But then to look at it as it's a doorway. It's yes. the amazing thing about being a woman. You are a doorway. Right. Not only for Absolutely. giving life, but also experiencing death. And it's, yes. I think as caregivers, we experience that with our family members as we help right. them to transition on. That's right. So we seem to be the caregivers and the caretakers of, of our the doorway family. Too, yeah, I think. Of the doorway. Really of that doorway energy. Yeah. And, and we have this sight that once we tune into the, to the bowl, we can see things more clearly and help mm -hmm. in that way because we can see when we tap into that center. It's a real place for visioning. Mm -hmm. And also, too, you know, with miscarriage, it's just, I think part of it is that there's a, a, an energy that comes in with that being and because women aren't quite sure what to do with that when an energy of a, of a spirit essence comes in and is more spirit than body there can be an energy that still comes in and blesses the woman in her life with her mm -hmm. relationship with that soul so another thing I tell them to do is really ask how does that soul want to be remembered how do they want to be acknowledged how do mm -hmm. they, they want to give expression to their energy and for me wild feminine really carries the essence of that soul imprint and so women can also or understand that though there's there is a loss and a grief and they have to move the grief there is also a blessing if they will bring that energy in and continue to give expression to it that's really beautiful yeah. well as well as being a doorway for life which is a, a wonderful blessing as a woman it's the pelvic bowl is also that center for creativity that's right how can we access that to be more creative as women right so there's so many ways and what I love one thing I love is as wild feminine has gone out as a book women are talking about it and there's a whole book club section at the end so women are gathering and having the experience of reading the material together and then I have a long-term book club who is um, come from all walks of life and they're choosing to read it now too we're reading it together so I'm reading it as a you know as if I've never seen it I'm just reading it mm -hmm. and so what's really fun is to see how women can can interpret that and and it's very expansive so there's so many ways so I think of it as really a woman tuning back into her center and and maybe unplugging a little bit you know a lot of times we've learned to use creative energy by just plugging our creative energy into the forms that exist so it might be into a particular job or it might be in a certain relationship structure it might even be in roles um, mother is one of those wife is another um, where we get kind of limited based on the structure that we've kind of learned maybe unconsciously and so if instead we come back to the center and we really work with the energy there we can begin to more dynamically co-create our lives and so our our the creative energy is really meant to flow through every aspect so instead of just being one way here and one way there we have this deep creative energy that wants to be given expression to and when we tap into that it'll even inspire us we might shift how we're working we might shift the way we're mothering we might shift the way we're partnering or the way we're inhabiting our body as a woman and so it can be used in day-to-day -day life from even you know I, I 
look at sometimes there's lists of things to get done but instead of just going through those lists like a taskmaster and we'll talk a little bit more about feminine masculine energy in a minute but you can get into this kind of non-creative way of living I'll back up and I'll really sense what's the next thing for me to do so I let this flow come through my center or I might stop completely and go out and just really appreciate the sunshine or the rain dropping down or the flowers that have just bloomed you know where's the earth and and where am I and how do I align that energy just to what's happening right now around me so it can be a f more fluid way of living that gives you inspiration can help you heal and really it's it's up to each woman to to tap into that and then give expression to it that's really wonderful mm -hmm. well you're talking about a woman holding feminine and masculine aspects right. in her body um, so a woman's left ovary and then her right ovary uh, they have different aspects of the feminine and masculine yes. Yes. and I love some of the terminology that you have around yeah. this so can yeah. you share how we can tap into yes. that again again I, I really wanted to be playful and be more creatively expressive about you know we talk about the ovaries and again they start to sound clinical mm -hmm. but they're very spicy they're very fiery they have real personalities I call them a woman's girlfriends because when we would tune into them when I would work with a client we tune into the energy they're funny and they have a lot to say and they can really make our life more fun and so it's really that fire energy within a woman and the left ovary tends to be more of the dreamy, intuitive, feminine ovary. Um, it's more right brain, left body. And so I call her the muse. She's the one who gives us the inspiration in life. And so, you know, too often we can see that as non-productive, particularly in this culture. And so we don't make time for her. But actually, if we go to those activities, those things that help us feel kind of dreamy and fluid and more, it's a more holistic side. So you kind of see the whole holism of life when you tap into this side. It's worth doing because it really fills us. And it often gives us our inspiration of how we're going to manifest our energy in the outer world. So making time for that feminine is really important. And then likewise, on the right side, we have more this masculine energy, and that's the right ovary. I call her the cowgirl, and I have a secret yeah, love I of like all things cowgirl. cowgirl. <laughs> <laughs> I like to ride her out. You look like the yeah. cowgirl. Well, yeah. I have lots of boots, yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so they can be really fun. And you know, often women will kind of tap into different expressions when they tap into one or the other. The left one might be more kind of you know flowy fabrics and mm -hmm. um, kind of uh, shimmery colors, and the right one might, might be more cowboy boots or um, cowgirl hats or just different ways or you know flashy jewelry or something she's more expressive in the outer realm and so we need both we need that that masculine what I was saying about the taskmaster mm -hmm. you know and that happens a lot where women are feeling like they've got a lot to do they've got a lot on their plate women today are very tapped they're very busy and so they all of us I think have our lists mm -hmm. and so again without the feminine the the right the right side over it can be going but it can be this taskmaster where you don't get to rest and you don't get to have time for things that really uh, fulfill you on a, an inner realm and so it's important to just you know talk to your cowgirl and just say you know I so appreciate your outer fire but let's tune into the leftover and they really should be working together mm -hmm. because then you get that that refill when you bring that leftover and that kind of that brings your you know refills your well and it also does bring inspiration that often is the visual the visualizing part of then bringing something into form so likewise if you spend too long in the feminine dreamy realm you don't get things done you can get a little lost there so we need that cowgirl we need that masculine who says okay time to put it on paper time to put it out in the world time to take shape um, we've done enough dreaming let's bring it out into the, to, to the true form and so together a woman needs both to feel really vibrant and vibrantly creative and I do think women have a tendency because we do come from one of our mother's ovaries you know, because we come from either the right or left side. So I've I, noticed. I've thought about I that. Know, okay, I've noticed that's interesting that, origins. Yeah. <laughs> well, true. and people, I've noticed, you know, when I when I ask people if they have more of a preference for the outer realm and kind of networking and connecting, they tend to be more right ovaries. They, they mm -hmm. feel more comfortable in the right ovary. Um, the left ovary, those women are generally a little bit more internally focused, um, maybe quieter sometimes, but deep. And, you know, we, we need both aspects, but it's it's also good to know, you know, where, where do I come from and, and why? do I have more comfort in one realm I think it's good to know your strengths and then also encourage yourself to to bring both in and and so there's a list in wild feminine um, in the ovary chapter just about right ovary and left ovary activities but I think it can be fun to kind of make your own list too and really just mm -hmm. say 
what is it that really helps me get into that spaciousness of the left ovary? And for some people it's cooking or gardening. For me it's writing. I also do meditation and ritual. I love, getting, and actually my children bring me over there a lot too. And then, um, and then what about the right ovary? What really brings that to life for you? What do you do in your life that really gives vitality to that? And it, it, you want to make sure that it is really connected to your own soul expression. So it's not just doing for the sake of doing, but what are you putting steps into that really matters to you on a soul level? I, I think women are deeply creative, but one thing I would say is women need to do a little bit more reorienting to the, the to that internal place, to their bowl, to who they are, to what they want to give expression to. So they make sure that they're they are giving some direction to their creative energy in a way that feels deeply aligned with their soul expression. Well, I like that because it, it really makes me think about things that I have never thought about. So that's really wonderful. Yeah, and you know, one woman wrote a blog um, online about uh, she's a Star Trek fan mm -hmm. and she was talking about how it reminded her of the starship and that there, there she showed a picture of there's these lights that look like ovaries and so I thought about that you know really it is like ste steering your starship you know when you tap into both energy fields you really give fire to your creative life. Well, I think it's a nice way to look at women as this creative force this giver of life and to me that's very very empowering yes. and another empowering thing is when women gather together and they create community Absolutely. and you talk about this in your book of right. creating um, resources for women yes. um, how can we do that to yes. lead a, a richer life together yeah I think you know again it's realizing that each one of us has our peace and that peace has a place in the collective so there's a lot of emphasis on individual and that can be really isolating women need community they need to connect with one another and part of the hesitation around connection is sometimes feeling worthy so I think the more that women tap into the beauty in their center and they really cherish themselves and they really honor who they are and what they're bringing, the more they can be seen and they can feel satisfied in their connections because they're being more visible and radiant. So it's a, it first starts, I think, with that internal place of really aligning with your energy, cherishing that energy and giving expression to it and, and really knowing what is it that you want to bring to community and then knowing that there's no scarcity there is abundance and every person is beautiful radiant soul bringing their peace and the more that each one of us brings that radiance the more that we can bring the shifts and the vibrance as a collective so it's really important that we tap into that beauty and then we bring it to the center and I think of the resources as each woman really lighting up her own fire and bringing that to the circle and everyone has their own unique gifts and together we're more whole. That's really beautiful. Can you share with us, because working with a thousand women, yes. that must have given you a very unique perspective. Absolutely. Um, can you share some of the stories mm -hmm. yes. um, from women and how they've mm -hmm. learned to access mm -hmm. this beautiful creative part? Well, I would say, you know, sometimes they're coming because they have a pain or a challenge or even a trauma that they're wanting to heal. And so I would say, you know, over and over again, each person might have, they might even be similar experiences. Someone might have had some sort of trauma that on paper, you know, this person and this person have had similar traumas. But it's kind of how we imprint it that is different. So it's really the, the stories of, of what has inspired me is knowing that each woman coming to her own center is the healing and so each woman coming to that place where she might feel afraid at first or hesitant to tap into that center as soon as she comes down and begins to walk around the bowl one thing I do with women is a meditation I'll just kind of share that where I invite them to come into their center and first feel the connection at the base of the bowl with the earth so we can even kind of do this right now as we're talking mm -hmm. and feel that nice earth connection because we get so busy we move out of our earth connection so it's tapping back in kind of slowing down and feeling that base bowl connection and really aligning with the earth. Then I invite women to come around and kind of sweep that bowl out. And so, you know, at first they're coming with a story usually and you know if this happened or that happened and I want to heal around it and so I hear the story and I hear what they're saying but I bring them to the bowl and the bowl really guides us and so I invite them to take a walk around and so the first thing might be their hesitance to go there um, the next thing might be as we're sweeping around so we can go you might just imagine in your mind's eye that you're taking a walk around this bowl and you're sweeping it out and you can clear it like there's light or water just moving down to the center so you're going around your bowl and then women will find that maybe they aren't sweeping part of the bowl that can be a place of disconnect where there might be an imprint that's blocking them. So I invite us to slow down and sweep a little more carefully. A another fun thing to do that I'll sometimes do in workshops is how we actually do this, envision their bowl, walk around, and then draw a picture of it 
on paper. Now, often, you know, the bowl should be nice and radiant around. Often, with having blockages, still kind of a, a dent in the circle or a place where they don't feel as clear. So I want to take a walk go slower this time and where they had difficulty to really spend time there either clearing or just being present, just being with, just noticing, even noticing the sensations. So we make it all the way around to the center. And then the next thing I have them do is balance the ovaries. So we go to the left and you can just breathe that left ovary, that left light. And then breathe into right ovary, that, that right ovary, that light. And that's the higher energy. And so right there too, there's another place where a woman might have had she might not feel empowered in her life. She might not feel like she can be visible, or she might feel like she's not creative, you know. And as soon as we tap into that fire and get those sparks going, she's in a different plane altogether. She's just playing with her energy, and she's realizing, oh, I've been limiting myself by these old imprints or these old stories, which are real and they have an, uh, uh, you know, an impact. But below that is the energy, just waiting for it, you to discover it and to connect in. And so then I invite them to go deep center and plant a seed or two in the womb. So if we go deep center in the bowl, that's a place where that, that doorway we were talking about with spirit. And I'll say, you know, think of an intention or two just for today. And it might be to connect more deeply with my body, to have my radiance visible in all areas of my life. It can be whatever, to heal this piece that I came in for. So they set that in their center and immediately their energy just starts to look beautiful like a crystal. That is so beautiful. And the last thing I do is invite them just to walk around and bless it. So bring blessings to the body. And that's one of the most powerful ways to heal these imprints is just, I am sacred, I am beautiful, picture golden light, filling that bowl. How it, you can be a mantra, it can be mm -hmm. just light. But it's bringing that beauty to the center and it just begins to align. That's so. wonderful. Well, Tammy, it has been so wonderful having you here today on New Connection. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure being here. Thank you. Thank you. You can learn more about women's health at our website at newconnectionjournal.com. Join us next time on New Connection, where you can tune in and grow.